Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and ladies and gentlemen, like the title suggests, you need to be more careful. Now, every time I go onto the internet, every time I log on to the internet in the morning, and I look through the uh, recent, you know, lineup of news, if you will, right, there's a lot of doomer scrolling, but when it comes to the most generic brain-dead article that I always find every morning when I'm excreting a fat dumpy, is you need to update Chrome, Windows, Zoom, every application you can imagine. And it's not just any of these articles. A lot of the clickbait sites will tell you, malicious extension lets attackers control Google Chrome remotely. Google Chrome, apply new security bugs now to fix these high severity bugs. Now, when I look at these uh, posts, every time I see them, uh, they're not lies. Obviously, there's a new uh, security hole found every day, okay? Guess what? Google Chrome is one of the most popular web browsers in today's day and age, okay? I don't know any other web browser that's actually more popular than Google Chrome. Uh, any to, actually, I don't even know many browsers that are more popular than Chromium in general. But, uh, of course, obviously, the more popular something is, of course it's going to have security bugs, guys. And you know what? For the most part, people generally auto-update their browsers anyways. But in the event that you don't, always install a browser update, okay? Usually browsers these days are pretty good with sandboxing a lot of things, but you got to understand every time you connect to the internet with just your standard browser, you're basically, you know, it's like having unprotected sex, okay? Be very careful, all right? Generally, things may appear to be safe, but you don't want to catch a dirty disease on your computer, so to speak. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, beyond all of it, I wanted to look at something else on the internet too, something that content that I used to regularly make, such as the deep web. So of course I went onto the old TikTok over there and I found some disturbing videos on the dark web. For instance, right here, I found this person deep web footage that got leaked. Oh no, you won't believe what happens next. Of course, I've got some uh, piggy jumping around. Uh, I guess you could say this is deep web footage that got leaked. I would have to imagine if it was popular on creepy message boards a few years ago, then it's not from the deep web or the dark web. You found this on 4chan, didn't you there, buddy? I like this one too. Disturbing video I found on the deep web. All right, let me go find this disturbing video. Oh no, it's blank room soup dot AV. <laughs> Man, 4C, just family. <laughs> Sorry. I have this allergy to BS right there. Now, I've learned, I, I've heard that people use TikTok to get their tutorials and news and, and general understanding of the world. Nothing wrong about that, of course. So I decided to look at deep webs where people had like 1.5 million views. Let's see how you access the deep web. All right, let's go. All right, uh, of course, you've got the video is for educational purposes only. You go to Tor Browser Download. You download it. This is being done on a Mac OS device. You download it for your operating system. I assume this person's going to download it for the Mac. Then you establish a connection within Tor and you go. Do not download anything. Good advice. Honestly, solid. Do not enter your information in any forms. Absolutely. And never use full screen on Tor. Okay, I'll actually explain why. If you use full screen, these sites will have access to your screen resolution and you don't want that. Uh, again, I just want to straight up say for the record, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you just maximize your Tor window on a 1080p uh, screen resolution, congratulations, you're part of the 99% of people accessing Tor. Now, what they're discussing here is browser fingerprinting, which we've looked at before. Obviously, your browser gives away a lot of data, okay? For instance, some of it may be your canvas resolution, which is the resolution of your web browser. Obviously, if you're running things at a weird wonky resolution, you stand out from the other maybe 100 people that have connected to a website. But if you have a 1080p screen layout and you've maximized the browser or, God forbid, full screened it, you still fall well within the parameters of the generic accessor to that website, okay? Most people are just going to be accessing with the same base maximized screen canvas resolution that these people try to shy you away from, okay? Simple as that. Honestly, trying to blend in as the most generic computer possible is the best bet that you can make. Okay, but for newbies, how do I get a virtual machine? Oh man, let me show you how to make a virtual machine, boys. Come on. Of course, here you've got some basics going on over here. How to get into the deep web, basics. 
Again, they're always downloading Tor right onto their host system. And of course, they just connect right here. They teach you how to get to the hidden wiki and they connect to Onion websites over here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to just stop right here. Okay, and I want to teach you the right way to do this. Obviously, following the advice of TikTokers or YouTubers that are just giving you generic advice is not something you want to dive into, okay? You want to be very careful when you connect to anything on the internet that's a little bit shady, okay? So I'm going to guide you through it step by step in a way that you can reasonably be safe, okay? Again, nothing is 100% safe, okay? But 99.9% .9 is better than nothing, all right? So let's get down to it. Now, the reason why I don't want you to download Tor right onto your host system is that generally you don't want to be connecting a lot of these things into your host operating system anyways. You don't really want to be giving these things a lot of unfettered access, especially when you probably have important things on your host system as well. So let's get into the entire reality of the situation. Now, when I first started deep web browsing, obviously a lot of that was done on a Windows operating system. I pretty much ran things on a air gapped computer anyways. I had a separate computer just for all that shenanigan stuff too. I never do any of these things on my host computer without virtualizing these components. So let's get down to how it happens. First things first, you wanna make sure you have VeraCrypt, okay? So VeraCrypt is a unique tool that you can use to create encrypted partitions on your system. You download this tool and then you go through an entire uh, set of process where you decide which encryption algorithm to use, how big your drives are gonna be, and what partition. Generally, I'm going to be teaching you as if you were using Windows like most people would anyways. You create something using a specific encryption mechanism. There's a bunch out there. Just go AES to fish serpent. That's what I use. Make sure you just basically go next, enable it for large files, create a partition somewhere around 25 to 30 gigabytes in size. If you have enough space, it'll take a few minutes to generate, but what you've done here is created an encrypted partition. Why is this important? Well, if you want to store files or anything that would be sensitive, then you can always store them in encrypted containers that if somebody were to hack your system, because of how strong the encryption here is, they'd spend forever trying to actually crack it. So again, you want to use VeraCrypt and first create an encrypted partition. Once you've done that, it's time for you to download a virtual uh, machine client. For instance, there's plenty of tools. There's VMware, but just because we want to go into the free sake of here, Go get Oracle VM Virtual Box, okay? You can download this for nearly anything, all right? Again, I'm downloading this primarily for Windows, okay? Now, of course, if you have a Mac system, do whatever you have to do on that. If you have a Linux system, you know exactly what to do. But here, download Virtual Box and get it installed. Now, setting up a virtual machine is very easy. You can go download two operating systems of your choice, Microsoft Windows, which is something I would recommend Okay, if you have enough like power in your system to run a Windows virtual machine very comfortably. You don't need a crazy computer to run a virtual machine, okay? Provided you have virtual machine extensions, which most gaming computers have, most computers nowadays come with that shit, you may have to unlock it in your BIOS setting, but get that up and running and you can be running a virtual machine comfortably, even if you have like an i3 processor, a low-end AMD system, you're literally using this to browse the web. You're not gaming under it. You're not doing anything crazy productive. You're literally browsing the web, okay? That's it. So again, you can download Windows by going Windows 10 ISO, all right? You just go over here, download the disk image file if you want Microsoft. Now, I usually go with something a bit lighter, so I went with Ubuntu, all right? All you have to do is go to their site, see the little download tab, go there, and click the LTS version. That's it, simple as that. Now what it'll do is it'll download an ISO file and opening up VirtualBox, you can go through a setup process where you basically set the destination to be that VeraCrypt partition that you have mounted, okay? Because you can mount those as their actual drives. Once you've mounted it, you can basically run through the installation. Do not do the uh, attended setup. I find that has a lot of issues no matter what. Unattend it and learn to install Linux your own way. It's literally just clicking next a bunch of times and entering a username and host system. On the host system, you'll enter a username. Just make sure you don't have like a dash virtual machine or virtual box. Just literally call it dash PC. Make it as generic as you can, okay? Just do all of that, pass through it, install Linux. You can literally have it done in minutes. You can walk away. You can make yourself a coffee, some G Fuel, whatever. Once Linux is installed, we're now back into the driver's seat, buckos. 
Okay, buckos, this is a virtual machine now, all right? Now, super simple. Now, at this point, you may choose to also apply a VPN, all right? Now, I know I've said in the past that I don't trust most VPN services, but generally, there are a few services out there that do have RAM-based servers, proper encryption. You just have to find the ones that don't log your data, and they take care of it as much as you can, all right? I'm not going to promote a specific one. Just pick the one that works for you under proper research, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, the more and more we go into it, let's download the Tor browser in our virtual machine. You might notice my system is running a little bit slower. That's because I'm actually running a virtual machine within a virtual machine right now. I actually have a Hyper-V setup going on. So if I look a little bit slow, it probably won't be the same for you. Again, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes because, you know, when it comes to misinformation or information on the internet, it's always best to get the best fucking information ever. Now, the reason you want a VPN, and the reason I'm saying this, is that the VPN just adds an extra layer of security. It adds an extra sort of like node. Uh, a lot of people say that it de-anonymizes you, which is actually bullshit, because at the end of the day, if you're using a virtual private network anyways, you're just obscuring your host IP address, and you're just adding an extra bounce in your situation. So of course, let's get into this whole thing. Now, because we're using Linux, okay, Download for Linux. If you installed a Windows virtual machine, well, you download for Windows. And if you have a Mac OS virtual machine, God forbid, then download for Mac OS, all right? Very simple. So I'm gonna download for Linux, okay? Right from the Tor browser. And uh, of course, it's gonna take me to the page over here. It's gonna immediately start a download for me. Now, of course, it'll take some time depending on how fast your network connection is. I'm downloading it. 11 megabytes a second it takes a few seconds okay so once that's done all right all you have to do is go to your downloads folder open that up and of course you'll see the tor browser sitting right there extract the file here in your download folder all right so again it'll go through an extraction process and then this folder will be made give it a few seconds and once it's done open that folder it'll be a tor browser nus folder within it click that and of course, once you see the star tour desktop dot, star tour browser dot desktop, all you have to do is right click, open in terminal, drag this thing right into the terminal window and hit enter. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it'll take a little bit, but once you've effectively fired it up, you'll see connect to tour, hit connect and bam, we just accessed the deep web in a actual contained virtual machine. Like you should, and not just download it from their goddamn website and run it on your host system, you know, willy-nilly, okay? Now, of course, this system is great if you wanted to just, say, browse the internet in general. I browse my internet within virtual machines simply because all I have to do is power these things on. I can minimize them and leave them hidden on my computer and fire them up whenever I need to. And honestly, I can just use Firefox. But if you're a Chromey boy, all you have to do is open up the software page download chromium all right like you would in an app store and then you can launch the chromium browser and browse the internet to your heart's content okay so as we're browsing the internet over here i can go to the old uh google if you will not giggle google.com again it's slower looking because i have it running within a virtual machine and another virtual machine too so it's literally going to be slow because of that but you can browse the internet like so all right enter whatever you want check the internet blah 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 you can watch movies, videos, download things through this and have them stored within a safe container. Now, again, because of the slow nature of this virtual machine, again, because of the circumstances of my specific system, it's still connecting to the Tor browser. I don't want you to worry. It will connect. OK, you can access the deep web in this way. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, it's as simple as that. All right. And the reason you want to do this again is because of a the sandboxing nature of it. A lot of malware can come through your computer via web browsing or downloading shady things or going to websites that uh, have a lot of uh, weird scripts running on them. Because you're running things within a virtual machine, the only thing that can truly get infected is the actual virtual machine. Now, I know there's going to be some people saying, but Muda, things can escape virtual machines. And you're right. There's actual malware that is designed to escape virtual machines. Hell, I recently just made a video where I fucked up. I connected my host uh, hard drives to a VM that I ran malware in and infected the whole system, okay? So again, mistakes can be made, but generally we're not giving this any tools to enhance our VM experience necessarily, nor are we connecting this to any drive outside of the VM. 
And of course, a lot of those VM malwares that exist aren't as common as you think. I'm not saying that they don't exist, but generally hypervisors have a lot of security teams working round the clock to patch out a lot of the issues that exist within them. Generally, you are much more safer doing this than just browsing it regularly through your system. Another reason why you want a sandbox is because when you do create a browser fingerprint, your fingerprint is more generic than say your actual host system, which can have a whole range of things passed to it. This will pass through a, pro, uh, uh, a, a CPU that is uh, generic, uh, a, a non-existent virtual graphic card, and uh, a bunch of little, a bunch of little fingerprint sort of, uh, a bunch of little fingerprints that are just more generic than your actual host system, for lack of any better term. So again, you want to browse this way, and you don't want to follow the TikTok, YouTube computer advice from people that necessarily don't know exactly what they're talking about. I'm not saying that they're that they're malicious. Obviously, the heart's in the right place, and these are people that have a clear interest in browsing the deep web or exploring parts of the internet that are a little bit risque. But you got to do this with some fucking care, okay? You can't just be sticking your dick in some crazy shit, all right? Simple as that. End all be all. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to make this video to sort of teach people how to be a little bit more careful. And of course, while the internet is filled with doom and gloom about this subject, you shouldn't be worried too goddamn hard. Following the most basic security advice will generally mean that you are safer than the average Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, hopefully, hopefully I made you laugh or something. I don't know, okay? Hopefully something positive happened. But I wanted to make this video because yes, this stuff is very important to me. And if I can make one person feel a little bit safer on the internet, then you know what? That'll bring a goddamn smile to my eye. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? This is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it. I have a G4 TV video, video to finish. Ah, and...